Today we are diving into the Dance of the Dragons with Renera Targaryen. My goal is to secure enough marriages first and then try rushing King's Landing, since we have the advantage with more dragons on our side. We have more allies than Aegon already, so these marriages are more about preventing the Greens from making them instead. So I quickly make matches with Dorn for Joffrey and Liz for Viserys. I also make sure Jacaris is a scar and all the kids are educated. I picked the mother as my patron and then reset and spent my skill points. I made sure to get fourth vassalage skill points here. And groom to rule is nice to get so your kids get some extra skills. Then I hold court before we go to war, rub some shoulders to earn some renown. Then we invite some nights while we eat our feelings to cope with our stress. We make Corlys our architect and build a hospice faster than you can save all our Morgulis so that we don't get taken out by a plague. And now it's time for war and marriages. And of course we gain another negative trait but it's fine. And now we can call our allies to join us. Well, this war needs a budget, so we are balancing the books by raising taxes and even revoking this minor title. If you marry the lowborn in your court, you can get a good vet nurse like this to keep your children healthy. And we also got more knights this way. So while we are at a leisurely hunt, our brother Aegon decides it's the perfect time for a coronation. Because, you know, last family we thought a little bit of usurping. And thanks to Ellison's rather unique approach to funerals, poor Viserys has gone from king to compost. And yet, for some reason, nobody dares to ask about the curious aroma lingering in the throne room. Talk about royal family drama. But if you'd like to watch me play as Egon and the Greens next time, you should subscribe. So, while Daemon is commanding an army for us, we are still at this hunt. But at least we get some good news. Here I speeded things quite a bit, at least until we get to the part where the real battle takes place. This is when our husband Prince Daemon dies and there are lots of deaths in both sides. Kristen is dead and Aemon is also dead, so that means two of our main rivals are now dead. Since I don't want to get a widow trait, I will have to move fast and make a new match for Renera. So we get married again to Merodoi Rogare, who has the Herculean trait, which is good. Jekers tries refusing his marriage to Bella and we refuse him back. Considering he gets still knighted, it went well. We give birth to a daughter, Daenerys, who has the pure blood trait, which means she will get married to the main line in the future. Since we are already married to a rogare, this frees up Viserys, who has the best traits out of our children. So I will marry them together. I also pick new educators for our kids. I isolate the capital and seclude myself, mostly out of paranoia, but also there is some sickness as can be seen by the red on the map. We wait for the final battle to be over, just as we get the news of Darren getting knighted and being placed on the king's guard. So this is it, and we win. And we reclaim the king's landing as our capital, and receive our coronation as the rightful ruler of all seven kingdoms. Now it's time for peace, and we get a new court. Since everybody is dead, we don't have many candidates. But anyways, what does peace mean for the people? Yes, more taxes. Now we have to figure out how to deal with our brother Aegon, especially since he is landed. On the other hand, Darren will be fine, as he is still part of the king's guard. We pick ourselves a crown, and also make money off selling some random artifacts like Kingsguard swords. We built hospices in King's Landing to be careful. Then I decide I will try murder Negon, as I don't want to see myself being used as dragon feet. Also, we are not in the clear yet. The Vale and the Iron Islands pretend to be independent. So we will have to deal with them, but I don't want to get any penalties. 
I will use a turret to farm prestige and gold first, then we will first conquer the ironborn, and later, since I have a claim for the veil, I figure I will just take that title for one of our sons. Then there is also the Dorn. So we start our taxation tour by visiting Heron Hall. This is also when I notice our sister Helena died, and Lucerius also gets the pox. So while I was reconsidering the marriage alliance with Egon, I also noticed Reina also died. So I need a new match for Lucerius. So Adam, who I gave the bastard trait at the start, gets to marry our niece. Jack Harris is still fine, and so is Bella. I'm pretty sure they will get this inherited in game because of the bastard secret. So I will not give any of our sons Dragonstone until we die. But anyway, I check eligible Valarions for Lucerius since I'm pretty sure Corvallis will die before then. And we are pregnant again. We sell the maids we get gifted by Laris. Corlys does a little cheeky here, but we don't care. He's already not looking good. Lucerys might also die, but if all of our Valarion heirs die, I can just legitimize Adam. And Corlys is dead, so all of that planning was unnecessary. But anyways, we marry Lucerys to Daenerys Valarion, matrilineally so their kids can stay Valarions. Anyways, we annoy Laris with requesting more gold from him, and we get more money by ransoming our prisoners. Then we continue our tax tour. This is when we get progress with murdering Egon. We continue with our tour. And this is when we get a notification that Prince Lucerius recovers. And I realize that we haven't had a steward since Corlys died. We get more tax and I figure I should invest more into Dragonstone. Jacaris grows up and I don't let him get Dragonstone. We also give birth to a new boy who doesn't inherit any traits from either one of us and he gets sick immediately. Anyway, we continue the tour farming prestige and gold. Then I get this notification where my agents scheduled a journey for Egon and this is where it ends for our brother. Now I will be able to revoke Jaharis's title since we no longer have a truce. But of course he has a low chance of accepting and he refuses. So we call our banners. It will be fast since we are closer so I'm not going to bother with calling our allies here. Lucerius gets a knight to Sukar. And we get a traveler trait. So this sword doesn't really last long. Since the castle is weak and we can siege it pretty fast. And we are able to enforce our demands pretty quickly. I had to take my time in deciding what to do with them. In the end, Jerry's goes to the wall. And Mailer becomes my hostage slash ward. And that's that. We accept to ally with Lucerys, who is now the Lord of the Ritmark. We are still busy with the tour. But at least we get another good news. And finally, it is over. Lucerys grows up. And we have to deal with the aftermath of the war. Bela also grows up to become her canon self. And they marry with Jacaris. We give birth to a son called Emma. And he's not too bad. We educate Viserys as a square, while we give Aegon to the fate. So this way, if our kids get revealed to be bastards, it will be Viserys who inherits, not Aegon. So we sort our affairs with the kids, and now we are ready for war. So if you want me to watch Conquer the Ironborn and the Vale, then the Dorn, don't forget to subscribe to watch more.